This video presents our findings on the distributional properties of NMR spectra obtained from human urine. High resolution NMR is a technique of choice for carrying out studies of large collections of biofluids. At the Institute of Food Research, we have undertaken a number of such studies in recent years. The aims have included the identification of biomarkers for nutritional status and identifying metabolite profiles associated with particular dietary interventions. The experimental designs have required collection of samples and spectra from tens or hundreds of different individuals from different cross-sections of the population, according to the purpose of each study. In recent work, we analysed samples from 300 postmenopausal women. The complete set of bucketed NMR spectra is shown here. The response in each bucket represents the integrated normalised area of a peak or peaks in the original raw spectrum arising from a single chemical species or metabolite. By expanding the x-axis scale, we can examine the individual responses in each bucket more closely. For example, the bucket chemical shift 3.09 parts per million is attributed to proline betaine, a compound found in plants, especially citrus fruits. It can be seen that the response values are not normally distributed. When they are represented as a histogram, the skewed nature of the distribution is clear. Examination of other buckets in the dataset shows that many are highly skewed, with tails of values indicating elevated levels of the corresponding metabolite. On examination of our other spectral collections from human urines, we have found that all exhibit this same skewed behaviour for a large proportion of the buckets. This dataset was collected from another group of postmenopausal women, in this case receiving carefully controlled diets for extended periods of time. Expanding a selection of the buckets, we can see that different individuals are responsible for the tails of the distributions of different metabolites. This is consistent with the finding that, irrespective of diet, people have highly characteristic urine metabolite profiles that can be distinguished from one another. For example, a principal component representation shows the clear grouping of data from different individuals. A common aim in many studies is to look for systematic differences between two or more groups of data for example, these spectra are acquired from three groups of volunteers, each receiving different amounts of dietary zinc supplementation. We would like to know if these levels have led to systematic changes in the metabolite profiles. A well-known statistical method for treating this kind of problem is analysis of variance, or ANOVA. These are the p-values obtained from applying ANOVA to each bucket in turn. These are intended to represent how likely it is that there is no significant difference between the means of each group. Only very small p-values are of interest. By zooming in, we see that there are quite a lot of metabolites which have p-values less than 0.01. However, an assumption of ANOVA is that the data being treated are normally distributed. If this condition is not met, the results obtained may be misleading. An alternative to ANOVA used to treat the same class of problem is the kruskal wallis test. This is a non-parametric method. It does not make assumptions about the precise nature of the data distributions. Here, the kruskal wallis p-values are compared with the ANOVA p-values by plotting them against one another. There is very little agreement between the two approaches. This is true also for the small p-values of interest. Furthermore, there are differences in the metabolites highlighted as significant when a threshold is applied. For some metabolites, whereas the ANOVA p-value may be very small, the kruskal wallis p-value is not. One such bucket is at 7.12 ppm. The histograms show the distribution of the data in each of the groups. The box plot summarise this data in an alternative way. The medians, marked by the purple lines, are almost equal, and the kruskal wallis test concludes that the groups do not differ significantly. 
In contrast, the means marked by the orange lines are pulled away from the medians by the skewness of the data. ANOVA is not an appropriate statistical test in this case. We have found that the levels of metabolites in human urines, as measured by NMR, are highly skewed. Although not shown here, this is found in raw as well as bucketed spectra. The tails of the distributions are not caused by outliers in the sense of data that is faulty in some way. Longitudinal studies of the same individual show that this pattern of skewness persists over time. Parametric statistical techniques may be unsuitable in such cases. We have illustrated this here with ANOVA, a commonly used statistical technique. An example of an alternative approach is the non-parametric Kruskal-Wallis test. Essentially, this is ANOVA on rank-transformed data. In summary, the skew distributions exhibited by so many metabolites must be taken into account at the data analysis stage. Statistical methods which make the assumption of normality must be used with caution and maybe not at all.